dear students i am dr y p agrawal professor emeritus kurukshetra university kurukshetra the module that we are going to discuss today is the significance of mean and other statistics basic principles the objectives of this module are to generate understanding of and calculation of significance of a sample as an estimate of the population mean to learn the methods of calculating standard errors for various statistics we will also try to understand the interpretation of the results of the significance testing we also like to understand the meaning and use of degrees of freedom confidence levels etc now in this module we will discuss various fundamental concepts and principles related with the significance of various statistics as the estimates of their populations inferential statistics is that branch of statistics which primarily deals with inferences from a sample to a larger population from which the sample has been drawn by implication also with the comparison of two sample estimates with a view to find out if they came from the same population or in other words if they did not differ significantly from each other on a given characteristic or property a significant difference means a difference larger than expected by chance or due to sampling fluctuations means that other measures computed from samples are called statistics and are subject to chance differences due to sampling fluctuations measures descriptive of a population on the other hand are called parameters and are to be thought of as fixed reference values we do not know the parameters but they do exist under specific conditions the parameters may be forecast from sample statistics with known degrees of accuracy the degree to which a sample mean represents its parameter is an index of the significance or trustworthiness of the computed sample mean when a statistic has been calculated the question which is generally asked is how good an estimate is this statistics for the parameter based upon the entire population from which the sample has been drawn this question applies to all statistics but only a few more important ones will be discussed in this module so now the meaning of sampling distribution and the standard error of the mean we write as sem if a large number of samples are taken from the same population and the same test administered to them under identical conditions the average scores or means of these samples can be calculated if the means so obtained are arranged in the form of a frequency distribution and also plotted on a graph as a frequency polygon we obtain the distribution of means sampling distribution of means the difference between a distribution of scores a sampling distribution lies in the fact that the former is based on an arrangement of scores while the latter of means or any other statistic it has been found that even if the distribution of scores is skewed the sampling distribution tends to reach a normal shape however it may not be true in the case of very small samples the smaller the sample the more the form of distribution of the population affects the form of distribution of the means it is important to have a knowledge of the form of sampling distribution of a statistic before we can draw any inferences from it about the parameters it warrants the use of the theoretical models or theoretical mathematical distributions like binomial normal poisson and hypergeometric however in educational and psychological data the normal distribution generally provides a good fit and hence a most popularly used standard error of the standard deviation of the sampling distribution and is to be interpreted in the manner as 
we interpret the standard deviation. The sampling distribution, though, are not calculated, yet they exist. The SC is also not calculated direct from the sampling distribution, but it is estimated from the sample standard deviation, which is the value available to us. Dear students, now I am going to show you the computation of the standard error of the mean, that is SEM. For the computation of SEM, we need to know the population standard deviation and then to use the following formula. Now take a look at this formula, which is for the computation of SEM or standard error of the mean. Now standard error of the mean is equal to the standard deviation of the population upon n root. This is a SC of a mean computed from a known population parameter in which the sigma bar is equal to SD of the population. N is equal to number of cases in the sample and SCM is shown as sigma M. However, the population parameter that is the sigma bar is generally unknown and cannot be directly obtained experimentally. It may involve a huge expense in terms of money and time to test the whole population and may defeat the very purpose of the experiment itself. Hence, statisticians have devised methods of estimating the sigma m from the sample statistics available to the experimenter. The formula for the, this purpose is then SC of the mean or SCM or sigma m is equal to sigma upon n under root. This shows the SC of the mean estimated from sample standard deviation in which sigma is the sample SD and n is the number of cases in the sample. Dear students, some authors suggest the use of n in the denominator of formula 2 for large samples. That is n equal to or larger than 30 and of n minus 1 for small samples that is n less than 30. The plea is that in very large samples generally used in social sciences, no appreciable difference takes place in the value of sigma m by using n minus 1 instead of n. The use of n or n minus 1 thus remains a matter of arbitrary decision. However, if n minus 1 instead of n has not been used in the calculation of the sample SD, then it becomes imperative to use n minus 1 instead of n in the denominator of the formula 2 for obtaining an unbiased estimate of the population standard deviation. Sigma, it has been shown that ST of a random sample underestimates that is, is smaller than the corresponding population sigma. Hence, for the correction of this underestimation, the ST of a sample should be computed by the formula ST is equal to sigma x square upon n minus 1 whole under root instead of the usual formula sigma x square upon n whole under root. The student will easily understand that sample sigma is the only estimate of the sigma available to us and hence the formula be used in the calculation of SC of the mean. Formula 2 above makes it clear that the size of SEM varies directly with the size of the sample ST and inversely with the size of the sample. Dear students, now I am going to explain to you the application and interpretation of SEM in large samples. Standard error of mean measures the degree to which the mean is affected by the errors of measurement as well as by the errors of sampling or sampling fluctuations from one random sample to the other. The interpretation of the SE or the mean is done to answer the question how dependable is the mean. Further, it may be asked as to how good an estimate is the sample mean of the population mean. The answer to these questions is provided by setting up the confidence limits or the fiduciary limits of the mean. These limits for a particular level of confidence are supposed to embrace the population mean. Thus, the interpretation of the SEM is done 
in terms of confidence intervals for the population mean that is standard mean now with the help of an example i am going to show you the calculation of scm by using formula 2 we assume the value of standard deviation to be 15 and the value of n or the number of cases equal to 400 the by using this formula we have the standard deviation upon n under root and we substitute the values in the formula we find 15 upon 400 under root and this gives me further the value is 0.75 which is the final value we have used st of the sample as our estimate of the population sigma scm is the standard deviation of the distribution of sample means around the fixed population mean that is population mean is a constant value assuming normal distribution the position of scm is shown in figure 1 figure 1 shows the placement of the mean of the population and also the various cut off points on the baseline now it shows that mean population and also the is equal to 0 and sigma m is equal to 0.75 as we go up the curve we put one sigma distance the 0.75 two sigma distance 1.50 and three sigma distance 2.25 we will go down the baseline and the center of the baseline we find minus 0.75 minus 1.50 minus 2.25 this shows further that 68.26% of the cases lie between one sigma distance below and one sigma distance above the mean and so on and so forth the students for setting up fiduciary limits or confidence intervals one may proceed as follows at 0.05 level value of z is equal to 1.96 this we have taken from the normal curve table now mean plus minus 1.9 sigma is the formula we substitute the values now 57 plus minus 1.96 times 0.75 is equal to 57 plus minus 1.47 this gives us 55.53 to 58.47 at 0.01 level value of z is equal to 2.58 from normal curve tables now mean plus minus 2.5 sigma m is equal to 57 plus minus 2.58 times 0.75 this gives me further 57 plus minus 1.94 and finally 55.06 to 58.94 the above confidence interval that is at 0.05 0.01 levels are in general used accepted as standard by most of the statisticians however confidence intervals with lesser degrees of assurance can also be set up now we can interpret the results in the following way the confidence intervals represent a range within which the parameter or m population is likely to fall hence With respect to our data above, there are 95 chances out of 100 that mean population would fall between the score values 55.53 to 58.47. There are 99% chances out of 100 that the mean population would fall between the score limits 55.06 to 58.96. Our confidence that these intervals contain mean population is 95% or p of 0.95 and 99% or p of 0.99 respectively dear students now i am going to show you the distribution of t t distribution is a theoretical distribution discovered by an english statistician w s gossett in 1908 writing under the pen name student 
in respect of its teacher R. A. Fisher. The distribution is therefore known as student's distribution. The T ratio is obtained by the formula T is equal to m minus mu upon S m in which mu is the population mean, m is the mean of the sample and S m an estimate of the sigma m obtained from S d of the sample. Gusset has shown that for random samples drawn from normal population as shown by Fisher who has termed it as the confidence interval of a parameter or fiduciary limits and the confidence placed in the interval defined by the limits as containing the parameter as fiduciary probability. The student the sampling distribution of t is given by the formula y is equal to y o upon 1 plus t square upon n minus 1 and the whole raised to the power n upon 2. That is the equation for sampling distribution of t in which n is the number of cases in the sample and y stands for length of the ordinate. The denominator of the equation will be minimum if t is equal to 0 and hence the height of the ordinate the maximum at the point. Since the squared value of t is used the ordinate y will be the same for positive and negative values and will generate a symmetrical distribution. Finally, t increases as the ordinate y or the height of the curve decreases. The curve is asymptotic to the baseline. The curve is much like the normal curve except that it is more peaked for small ends and ends grow in size the t distribution approaches normality. As depicted in figure 2, the t distribution is not a single distribution, but a family of distributions depending on df, like binomial and normal distribution already discussed in a previous module. t distribution is another theoretical model having wide applications to several sampling problems. Tables of values of t have been devised by statisticians, these show t values for different levels of confidence and are very simple to use. The value of t at the intersection of a given df and level of confidence is to be picked up as the critical value. The students, I am going to show you a figure which is about the distribution of t for various degrees of freedom ranging from 1 to infinity. Take a look at the figure. It is not a single curve, but a number of curves and is a number of distributions for various degrees of freedom like 25 degrees of freedom, 9, 10, etc. So, this is different from the normal curve which is of course a single distribution, but this has a multiple distributions with depending on the various degrees of freedom. The students, now I am going to show you the meaning of degrees of freedom df. The concept of degrees of freedom is of key importance in inferential statistics. Almost all tests of significance requires the calculation of degrees of freedom. It is a mathematical concept. The geometric interpretation of the concept relates to the movement of a point in relation to the number of dimensions. It is attached with a point on a line is free to move in one dimension only and thus has one degree of freedom. A point on a plane has freedom of movement in two dimensions and has two degrees of freedom. A point in space of three dimensions has three degrees of freedom. The expression degrees of freedom is abbreviated from full expression degrees of freedom to vary. When sample statistics is used to estimate a parameter, the number of degrees of freedom depends upon the number of restrictions placed upon the scores, each restriction reducing 1 df. The students, now I am going to explain to you the application and interpretation of SEM in small samples. The procedure of calculation and interpretation of standard error of mean in small samples 
differs from that for large samples in two respects. Number one, the denominator n minus 1 instead of n is used in the formula for calculation of SD of the sample. Number two, the appropriate distribution to be used for small samples is T distribution instead of normal distribution. The rest of the line of reasoning used in determination and interpretation of SEM in small samples is similar to that of the large samples. Now, here is an example. A randomly selected group of 16 students was administered a test of verbal ability. The mean and standard deviation obtained by the group are 52 and 8 respectively. Determine the 95% and 99% confidence intervals for the M population. Now the solution. The students now we in step 1 we calculate SCM. SCM is equal to sigma upon n under root. When we substitute the values we have 8 upon 16 under root. The final value is 2.00. Now from table of t we pick up the values of t. Since sample size is small t value is used. For df equal to n minus 1 that is 16 minus 1 is equal to 15. T at 0 0.05 level is equal to 2.13 and T at 0 0.01 level is equal to 2.95. Now we set up confidence intervals. At 0 0.05, M plus minus 2.13 SEM is equal to 52 plus minus 2.13 times 2.00 is equal to 47.74 minus 56.26 and at 0 0.01 level mean plus 2.95 SCM that is 52 plus minus 2.95 times 2 is equal to 46.10 to 57.90. We can interpret the results in this way now. There is a probability of 0.95 that the M population will be within the score range 47.74 to 56.26 and at 0.99 probability that M population will be within the score range 46.10 to 57.90. A look at figure 3 will reveal the placement of the limits of the two confidence intervals in terms of SCM and scores. The width of the 0.99 confidence interval that is 46.10 to 57.90 is larger than the 0.95 confidence interval that is 47.74 to 56.26. If the experiment or observation is repeated for a large number of times, chances are that M population will be within 46.10 to 57.90 with our chances of being correct 99% times and being wrong only 1 in 100 times. Dear students, we should understand that small n's do not necessarily generate stability of the results because smallness of the sample may not lead to an accurate representation of the parent population. Randomness is in such cases may prove ineffective to guarantee this condition. Now, take a look at this figure and shows the confidence intervals at 0 0.05 level or 95% confidence. The confidence intervals are from 47.74 to 57.25 and for 0 0.01 level we have 46.10 to 57.90. Thus, that the confidence intervals for 0 0.01 level and 0 0.05 level they differ. In this case, these are shown in this figure. The students, after showing you the calculation of the standard error of the mean, we come down to the calculation of the standard error of a median. It has been established that the variability of the sample medians is about 
greater than the variability of means in a normally distributed population. Hence, the standard error of median can be estimated by using the formula SC median or sigma median is equal to 1.253 sigma upon n under root. Now, sigma MDN is equal to 1.858 q upon n under root. Standard error of the median in terms of sigma and q. It is clear from formula 7 above that SC median is roughly one fourth times the SCM. Hence, the SCF median is less dependable and more subject to sampling fluctuations as compared to the SC of the mean. Example, on a test of mechanical aptitude, 225 randomly selected students of an engineering course secured a median of 25.50 and a Q is equal to 5. How well does this median represent the median of the population from which this sample was drawn? The solution is like this. We use the formula 8. Now, standard error of median is equal to 1.858 times 5.00 upon 225 under root. This gives me a value of 0.62. Since n is large, we can use normal curve tables to set up the confidence intervals. Z for 99% is equal to 2.58. The same values we used in larger samples of SCM cases and Z for 95% is equal to 1.96. Hence, the confidence intervals are for 0.99 confidence, median plus minus 2.58 sigma median is equal to 25.50 plus minus 2.58 times 0.62. Then the final value we arrive at is 23.90 to 27.10. For 0.95 confidence, we use median plus minus 1.96 sigma median. The students, this gives me the value that is 25.50 plus minus 1.96 times 0.62. That is 25.5 plus minus 1.22. That is 24.28 to 26.72. The interpretation of the confidence intervals follows the same pattern as that of the mean. Here we can place 99% confidence and 95% confidence respectively that the population medians will be within these ranges. The students, now we come to another important concept, the standard error of a standard deviation or SC standard deviation. Since standard deviation also records fluctuations from sample to sample, the SC of the standard deviation also be estimated and used to find the limits within which population ST will fall. The formula for the purpose is SC standard deviation is equal to sigma upon n under root, the standard error of a standard deviation. Now, the formula for standard error percentage is SC of percentage or sigma percentage is equal to P times Q upon N whole under root. This is the formula for standard error percentage in which P stands for the percentage of the group passing the trait and Q is 1 minus P. N is equal to the number of cases. Now, with the help of an example, I am going to demonstrate the calculations. Suppose 40 percent of the 200 children were found to have shown signs of tiredness after a strenuous physical exercise. Assuming that the sample was randomly drawn from a specified population, how well do our results represent the population percentage? This is our question. Applying formula 10, we get SC 
percentage is equal to 40 percent times 60 percent upon 200 whole under root, which gives me a value of 3.46 percent. Now we set up the confidence intervals. For 0.99, the confidence interval will be 40 percent plus minus 2.5 times 3.46 percent. And that is 40 percent plus minus 8.93 percent. Finally, 31.07 percent to 48.93 percent. Now, for 0.95 confidence interval, we do like this 40 percent plus minus 1.96 times 3.46 percent. And finally, we get the value 33.22 percent to 46.78 percent. You may feel sure with 99 percent confidence that the percentage of children in the population who are likely to be tired after the physical exercise will not be less than 31 percent and more than 48.93 percent. Now, the standard error of a correlation coefficient or SER, we may draw a large number of samples randomly from a population, compute a correlation coefficient for each sample and prepare a frequency distribution of correlation coefficient. The shape of this distribution depends upon the R population. As R population departs from zero, the population distribution of Rs becomes increasingly skewed. A highly positive value of R population generates an extremely negative skewness, while a high negative value of R population produces an extremely positive skewness. Now, the formula for the SC of the R is equal to 1 minus R square upon n under root. This is the SC of a correlation coefficient. The example, the value of R in a set of 100 scores is 6. How dependable is this value? For formula 11, we have sigma r is equal to 0.64 upon 10 is equal to 0 0.064. Using normal distribution, we set up the confidence intervals as below. At 0.99 confidence, r plus minus 2.5 bits sigma r, that is 0 0.6 plus minus 2.58 times 0 0.064. Finally, is equal to 0 0.6 plus minus 0 0.165. Finally, we arrive at the values 0 0.435 to 0 0.765. For 0 0.95 confidence in level, we have r plus minus 1.96 sigma r and we substitute the values 0 0.6 plus minus 1.96 times 0 0.064. And finally, we arrive at the value which is 0 0.475 to 0.725. The interpretation is that the population R will be within these limits. The students, this formula has a fundamental defect that the theoretical model of normal distribution is not a good fit to the sampling distribution of R's as explained earlier. Hence, Z transmission of R is recommended. To conclude this module, let me summarize a couple of things. Now, we have seen the calculation of standard errors for mean, median, standard deviation, and R. These are important concepts. And this may lead to further when we try to compare the means from more than one samples, which is the subject of the next module. Dear students, you have to be very careful about these things. Number one, take a look at the DF. Now, number two, take a look at the values that you pick up from the table of T and, and Z. You have to be very careful in your calculations and so that we may not make any mistakes in this case. 
Thank you.